Thanks, Lindsay, for the introduction, and uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for staying uh, the best for last. Um, let me introduce you uh, to Sonata Therapeutics with our uh, safe harbour statement. Uh, please refer to our filings on the ASX or that's the Australian Stock Exchange or the company website at sonata.com uh, for all of our public filings. A few key facts about Sonata Therapeutics. We're an Australian stock exchange listed company. Our ticker code is CYP. We commenced operations in November 2013. Market cap at the moment is around 23 million US dollars. We have around uh, two years of cash. We recently raised a further five million Aussie in a placement here in the US with three institutional investors, again giving us around about a two year runway. 1,900 uh, uh, shareholders and our focus is regenerative medicine, obviously. Uh, in particular, the development of a, a novel process for the manufacture of mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells need no introduction from their, the perspective of their therapeutic potential. Uh, here at this conference and many other venues, of course, we hear about the very, very exciting clinical opportunity uh, in front of mesenchymal stem cell-based medicines. Major unmet medical needs are being uh, investigated, uh, particularly diseases like stroke, cardiovascular disease, the complications of diabetes. And although um, the uh, uh, late stage clinical studies are still underway, it certainly looks uh, very, very promising for MSC based therapeutics. In particular, we note uh, the relevance to diseases of ageing, and as we heard uh, yesterday in the, one of the plenary sessions, the ageing population and the health care costs associated with maintaining a standard of care for uh, our elderly uh, is increasing, particularly in developed uh, markets worldwide, Japan, the US, Europe, Australia. And mesenchymal stem cell-based therapeutics are looking particularly uh, promising for those diseases. And of course the legislative changes in markets like Japan underscore the opportunity and the excitement around MSC therapeutics. One of the more interesting uh, applications that uh, is receiving considerable attention at the moment is the use of MSCs in cancer. MSCs have a characteristic of homing to tumour sites, uh, solid tumour sites, and that characteristic is being harnessed in a number of therapeutic paradigms, uh, particularly um, in genetic engineering of MSCs to um, uh, enable them as a form of Trojan horse in solid tumours. Uh, there'll be a lot more uh, about that in the year, uh, year or so to come, I'm sure. But the one challenge that MSC therapeutics face, and it's a, uh, a challenge that has been echoed in the last couple of days, in fact I just came out of one of the plenary sessions there, and we hear about manufacturing innovation time and time again. The uh, limitations of commercialisation of cell-based therapeutics imposed or constrained by the existing methods of manufacture. And we and many others believe that those existing methods of manufacture uh, represent a major roadblock for the eventual commercialization or if you like the industrialization of MSC therapeutics. And so to help uh, understand our technology in that context, we produced a short uh, animation which I'm pleased to uh, uh, provide uh, for your enjoyment here. Stem cells represent an exciting new wave in medicine. They are found throughout the body and can play a vital role in treating our medical needs. Stem cells can help create new tissue, and certain stem cells can even be used in therapeutic medicine to help repair the body and treat such devastating conditions as stroke, neurodegenerative disease, and heart disease. To do this, a patient can provide their own stem cells, but this is impractical and not scalable for medical treatment. Instead, we can obtain them from healthy donors who need to be identified, screened, and qualified. To create a batch, the cells need to be expanded, but as they mature, the cells become less expandable and don't work as well. So you need to repeat the process of identifying and screening new donors. Lots of donors. This is a complex and expensive process, and the traditional method cannot ensure consistency in each batch because of the number of donors involved and because every donor is different. But imagine if you could take a single donation from a single donor to provide all the cells you will ever need with infinite expansion capacity to potentially treat major diseases worldwide. That's what we do at Synauto. 
Our Symers technology originated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, a world leader in stem cell research. Our technology eliminates the need for multiple donors. Therefore, our stem cells are consistent and reproducible, making them perfect for therapeutic medical treatments and allowing us to take advantage of the enormous potential of stem cell-based medicines. This is the next generation of stem cell therapy, and we are at the forefront. Expandable, cost-effective, and more reliable, and all this from just one donor. Find out more about how Sinata is changing the future of medical treatment at Sinata.com. So in short, um, the consistent message that we're hearing from investors, pharma, big pharma, patients, patient advocates is that there needs to be innovation in manufacture, manufacturing innovation. And that's exactly uh, the technology that Sonata has developed. It's the, the next generation of stem cell manufacture. We and many others believe that the reliance upon multiple donors and high levels of expansion to create the necessary uh, uh, volume of product uh, to treat multiple uh, patients is flawed and that uh, it's been very, very effective to get us to where we are today, to the exciting uh, clinical potential of MSCs. But ultimately, uh, 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 the fruition of that excitement really relies upon a scalable, re consistent, reproducible manufacturing method, and that is what we have developed. I don't need to tell you that, um, that, that reliance upon donors has challenges, and bone marrow extraction for one source is problematic. It's a risky procedure for the donor. It, uh, it, it can on only be undertaken a, a few number of times with each donor, obviously necessitating hundreds of new donations per year. And multiple donors, frankly, lead to multiple problems. The major challenge really is a numbers game. If we look at bone marrow aspirates, we can isolate around 20,000 mesenchymal stem cells per aspirate. And then you've got to translate that to the number of cells that are used per dose per patient, around 100 million, 150 million. So the expansion and recruitment of donors poses very, very major problems. Not only do we have the intra and inter-donor variability to deal with, there's the regulatory complications associated with switching donors, necessitating comparability studies that may be straightforward if indeed uh, the, the endpoints are clear, but also they're associated with considerable risk and considerable cost. And we hear time and time again, the reduction of cost of goods is an important element in the commercialization of cell-based therapies. And our technology provides that, that uh, substantial reduction in cost. So in short, um, the reliance upon multiple donors and high expansion technologies leads to inconsistent clinical results, low product margins and regulatory uncertainty. It's self-serving, of course, for Sonata to, to, uh, to pose that argument, but it's an argument that's also being posed in the literature. And there's considerable body now of research publications uh, questioning the logic of the uh, reliance upon multiple donors and high expansion protocols to derive uh, commercial product. And this is just a couple of uh, literature examples that, uh, that I highlight for you. Sonata's technology, in short, is a cheaper, better, faster uh, solution. Uh, we rely upon uh, IPSC-derived uh, production methodology, and in, accordingly, the expansion can be at the IPS stage rather than at the MSC stage. So the MSCs that we uh, derive from our uh, differentiation protocols are fresh, robust and consistent. One single donor, one time, has produced our master cell bank, uh, uh, our IPS cell bank, and our production methodology is highly scalable. So Sonata's Cimeris technology has transformed the industry from basically a cottage industry, a bespoke manufacture of MSC product to an industrial scale, consistent reproducible product. Unlimited MSCs from a single one-time donor, clinical premium quality, consistent quality, consistent efficacy is of course the hallmark of a pharmaceutical product. And many of us forget that in the commercial success of a pharmaceutical product, 
essentially only three things matter. Safety, efficacy, and an ability to manufacture the product at scale consistently, reproducibly, and at reasonable cost. And it's that third piece of that jigsaw puzzle that Sonata delivers with its Cimeris technology. We believe it's very much a transformative uh, uh, technology for MSC therapeutic commercialization. The technology, as the animation uh, uh, explained, came from the University of Wisconsin. And our inventors include Professor James Thompson, who, as pictured here on the front cover of Time magazine a few years ago, is the man who brought you stem cells. The original isolation of uh, embryonic stem cells, which of course has given rise to uh, our industry, uh, was identified uh, by James Thompson. His colleague, Igor Slukvin, is very closely involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, management of the company and is in a, on our scientific advisory board. The in-licensed technology from the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation includes a broad portfolio of patents relevant to our process. Importantly, uh, we have spent the last um, six months or so characterising the MSCs that are derived from our manufacturing process to understand their characteristics and to ensure that they conform with the accepted profile of an MSC. Um, so obviously uh, we've identified the uh, classic cell surface markers, the ISCT guidelines for MSC characterization, differentiation potential, immunopotency assays have been conducted, we've uh, undertaken mRNA genetic profiling, and then finally we've conducted a successful in vivo model in critical limb ischemia, a well accepted uh, model of, of that disease in which our uh, data was very, very successful. So the key competitive differentiators for Sonata, we are the only company in the stem cell, mesenchymal stem cell space that's able to manufacture a consistent, reproducible MSC product that is independent of multiple donors. And that is a key commercial element. We're capitalised well below our comparable stem cell companies, probably a factor of our ASX, Australian Stock Exchange listing, but nonetheless it's a fact. The risk profile of Sonata is substantially below the discovery, uh, substantially lower than discovery companies. The risk inherent in discovering what MSCs are useful for and their safety has of course already been addressed by the many, many companies who have blazed the trail, the mesoblasts, the athesises and so on of this world who have been so successful in exposing the very, very great promise of MSC-based therapeutics. But nonetheless, they have assisted us in, in reducing the risk because at the end of the day, we're simply uh, paving the way, if you like, behind those explorers who have cut a path through the forest. Our uh, business model is built around partnering, so obviously a very uh, much shorter path to revenue than if we were going to build a fully integrated biopharma company. And the management and board of directors uh, has extensive experience in commercialisation of uh, biotech and pharma discoveries and building and exiting out of uh, multiple companies. I mentioned that our path to revenue is partnering. Uh, we have a very, very firm focus on a business strategy that's driven by corporate alliances. It's a very capital efficient, license driven model, very, very effective uh, in, in the biotech sector, especially in Australia where a lot of discoveries um, uh, are made, but the ultimate commercialization is usually achieved through partnering. That also produces near-term revenues, which of course excites uh, the investment community, uh, ideally through R&D payments, uh, royalties, uh, upfronts and so on. We, as I mentioned before, we have a deal experience management team and it, this year we've seen some very, very exciting uh, partnering and acquisition activity that I think has started to light that fuse of M&A and uh, the interest of big pharma and big biotech in what we in the MSC industry are doing. The um, cell gene collaboration with Mesoblast a few months ago, the acquisition of CDI by Fujifilm, and of course, Athesis' partnership with Chugai with their stroke product. All of those deals and transactions stimulate uh, the appetite for big pharma. And the last thing big pharma and big biotech ever want to do is get the, be the last person standing. 
Ultimately, of course, uh, a partnering strategy leads potentially to M&A. And then finally, the company is uh, presently underway with a number of leading industry participants in, in our, our fulfilling on our business strategy. Finally, the uh, value catalysts for the company. We have uh, had a very busy couple of years in business um, and uh, have achieved uh, some major milestones, including the process validation of our manufacturing methodology. But the, it's the forward-looking uh, activity that becomes most important from an investment point of view. And there we expect to uh, some announcements on our discussions with potential partners, uh, ongoing interaction with the FDA and the European Agency. We've had meetings with both bodies and there have been no major issues raised with our IPSC uh, derivation route. Uh, we're developing a schedule for our phase one clinical study, which will be conducted in graft versus host disease. Not a commit commercially attractive target, but nonetheless a very uh, safe target, if you like, for a phase one proof of concept study. We'll also uh, be reporting in the coming months data from our preclinical program, in particular a proof of concept study that is underway in a graft versus host disease model. Continued success, of course, of MSC-based therapeutics. The rising tide lifts all ships. And we hope for, for success for all of our uh, peer companies in this sector because at the end of the day, we want them to be successful. That will drive interest from uh, investors, insurers, payers, governments, patients, patient lobbyists, interest in the category, interest in MSC-based therapeutics. And then finally, uh, we expect some announcements uh, from the company in the coming weeks about investigation of MSCs uh, in cancer therapy, in particular engineered MSC-based uh, therapeutics. So we believe that an investment now in Sonata Therapeutics is a, is a very sound investment. The, the expanding and vibrant field of stem cell medicine le needs no introduction. The ageing population, of course, is driving and will continue to drive better therapeutics. And some of the applications that we spoke about before uh, are showing great promise. We have a unique innovative technology from the leading centre in stem cell research worldwide. It's technology that overcomes the final hurdle, the manufacturing hurdle in, in industrialising uh, mesenchymal stem cell production. We have a capital efficient, licence driven business strategy, an experience management team, value accretive news flow in the near term, and then finally uh, potential near term revenues from that partnering activity. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and we still have about a minute and a half for any questions, uh, so I'm happy to take anything from the audience. Thank you for your attention. No questions? Thank you all.